The conclusion we've come to from that is that there's a significant spherical aberration that appears to be present in the optics and that we should be able to fix it in our insurance program. Thousands and thousands of people worked on Hubble. And by the way, if you ask all of those thousands and thousands of people before the launch in uh, April of 1990, what's your 10 biggest concerns about what could go wrong on Hubble? I absolutely guarantee you that not one of them would have said spherical aberration or a bad mirror. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavor on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. Spherical aberration is a problem in the surface, surface structure of the mirror. The mirror is supposed to be ground to a perfect parabola where all parallel light coming down comes to one focus. Spherical aberration is when one part of the mirror is slightly higher or lower than the other and light instead of coming to one focus from say the edge of the mirror will come over here and then from the center of the mirror will come to focus up here. So you get what that does is blur the focus. You can almost think of it, if, if you've got bad myopia, which you can say our telescope has now, and you put your glasses on, you can correct totally and get 20-20 vision. I'll never forget the day of the fabled press conference at Goddard when we had announced to the world that the Hubble was broken, and we didn't know if we could fix it. We didn't frankly think we could fix it. Except, just before the press conference, Space Telescope Science Working Group, a bunch of about 20 astronomers involved with Hubble, were meeting at Goddard, coincidentally, that day. And I ran into John Trowger. He was a scientist on the Wide Field Camera One team, the one that was taking all the fuzzy pictures. And he called me over to the hallway and said, Ed, I want to tell you something. I said, what? We can fix this. I said, come on, John. What do you mean? He said, now that we know the prescription of the, of the mirror, the, 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 shape, the shape is perfect, but it's got the wrong shape, just like your nearsighted eye. Now that we know the exact prescription to, you know, five or ten decimal points, there are four little mirrors inside our new camera that we're building, our backup camera called the, the clone, the WIFPIC2 clone. There are four little called relay mirrors. If we reground those with the correction that we know we need in it, like glasses for your eyes, we can solve the problem internally right away, 1993, when we go up to fix it. I said, are you sure, John? Because I'm going to tell the press this. He said, I'm positive. So during my press conference, I gave all the nasty things. Oh, we're not going to be able to take any pictures. We're not going to be able to do this. However, we feel that uh, we can characterize the problem, the spherical aberration problem, well enough that uh, we can take advantage of an insurance policy that we haven't talked much about. And it hasn't been in the press much. And that is, we started a long time ago to plan a maintenance program. That is, every three years we plan to go up with the space shuttle, uh, change out instruments, uh, change out uh, things that broke. Before launch, if you had said what would be success, I would say 50% and the whiff pick. But the whiff pick had to be. Co-star by itself, I don't think would have made the difference. But whiff pick, images. People aren't going to believe a spectrum. <laughs> think about it. Would people believe a nice, beautiful spectrum fix the Hubble Space Telescope or a picture of the Eagle Nebula? I leave it to the audience. <laughs> you know? So that's what I said, you know, whiff pick and about 50% of the other things and would be happy because we'd never done this before. This is the first time NASA ever tried five EVAs, more than six hours each, and do and did, to do all these different things, whiff pick, uh, you know, co-star, gyros, solar panels. I mean, we were doing everything except putting in a new kitchen sink. So we all fly to Houston. The first EVA started, of course, all these things happen at night, but astronomers are used to them, right? Every night it became like a dream sequence because every night that start, they get this done, that done, whiff pick went in, next night they got co-star in, next night they got gyros in. By the end of the fifth night, we're looking at each other like, are we dreaming or did this happen? Did we just do five successful EVAs and fix everything? So we came back from Houston like on top of the world. But it was like, you know, it was like you had major eye surgery and the operation was a success, but you still had the bandages on. And uh, we had to take the bandages off sometime. We're all looking at this monitor when the picture, the picture was taken, and it was just a real rich star field. And what we're hoping not to see is a bunch of fuzzy stars with all kinds of weird rays coming out of them, like they used to be in spherical aberration. So the image started coming up, and this was an old cathode ray tube, so it was, you know, I, I know this is technology that some of the young people in the audience don't even know what I'm talking about, but it took a while for the image to build up. And we first saw a little bright star in the center, and then some fainter stars came up, 
more and more stars came up, but the, and every the t you could you could hear a pin drop. You could you could have heard an atom drop on the floor. <laughs> it was so quiet. And slowly, more and more stars came up, and they were sharp. And there were lots of them, lots of them. Because when you're out of focus, you don't see very faint things. When you're in focus, you really see deep. And then the picture was there, and it was perfect, absolutely perfect. And there was still a moment of silence, and then everybody just went crazy. And I can't describe it. Everybody was hugging each other, crying, tears, you know. Somebody ran, came in with champagne, you know. It was, it was just a moment I'll never forget as long as I live. Hubble was fixed. Total success. You couldn't have, you couldn't have had a bigger success in that first servicing mission. When Hubble was launched, I always thought that, uh, you know, it would uh, die about, and I'd have another 10 or 20 years in my career. And here I retired 10 years and it's still going. <laughs> yeah. It, it, made me, it made me the butt of jokes. It made me uh, a collector of arrows, slings and arrows from my neighbors. Uh, the press thought I was a joke. And seeing where Hubble is now, making those early promises look like nothing. I mean, a piece of cake. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's iconic. It's the greatest American scientific achievement ever. It's the great American comeback story. We should be able to fix it in our insurance program. I think uh, we're all committed. Nobody's walking away. I think we're all committed to work on it and do it right.